Hi, it's Lori Ballin in Las Vegas, and you are watching one of the videos in the series, 365 Days of KW Command. Today, I'm going to do a core training. We're going to cover the applet referrals. Now, referrals was actually one of the first applets we got, had access to when they rolled out KW Command. And here's what I've noticed. Uh, more real estate agents that send me referrals do not use the system yet. There's a lot of KW agents that are still sending us referrals that are not yet using the system. So I want to go over this with you a little bit and show you actually how easy this is to use. Okay. Now, first looking at, let's, let's go, let me show you how we got, got there. We're going to go to the home screen. Down at the left where you see this little map pin with a person in it, that's your referrals. Okay, so right from here we have our dashboard. If you click on my referrals, you're going to be able to see all of the referrals that you have sent out and all of the referrals that you have received. And we're waiting to see if that's going to load up here. They might be doing some updates. All right, we'll come back to this page. Next one is the map. Okay, that seems to be working quite nicely. And then we have my network. So dashboard show, gets you access to the whole screen. My referral shows you your inbound and outbound referrals. Map is gonna help you uh, grow your network and find some connections with referrals, which I'm gonna show you in a couple minutes. And then we have my network, which is people that you have already connected with. All right, so let's take these one step at a time. Now, uh, they must be doing something because my numbers are not there. <laughs> so that's interesting. Clearly, they're doing something with the um, updates because I have a lot of referrals in here right now that are not showing up on top there. Not sure why. All right, so normally you'll be able to see how many referrals you have, how many you've received, how many you've sent, how many are pending, and how many invites you have. So let's start by clicking that invite. All right. So Brenda says, all right, we'll give Brenda a little promo here. So Brenda is in North Carolina. She's in the Charlotte area. area. Brenda Rodriguez Mendoza. She messaged me and she said, I would love to earn your business and become a referral partner of choice. Okay. Now, today, as a matter of fact, I got a message from Brenda with a referral and so clearly she was trying to make the connection on uh, KW Command Referrals and I didn't see it fast enough so she messaged me directly. And I think we're seeing a lot of that right now just because notifications are still kind of lagging. We're not, you know, I would love to get a text message anytime somebody is trying to send me a referral or if they're trying to connect with the network, maybe they can check a box saying I also have a referral so that we would accept their connection faster. Anyway, these are all things that are going to be coming over time. Okay. So that's what it looks like when you have a pending invite. Now, all of these people here are in my network. Now, what does that mean? Nothing really. What I mean by that is what happened is nobody really knew how this was going to work. So a bunch of us just kind of sent out referral connections to both people we wanted to connect with and then maybe somebody we met at family reunion or whatnot. And we really didn't vet the, the referral partners to determine whether or not this was truly a referral partner we wanted to work with. So we wound up kind of just building this database of everybody again, which is not really the best use of this system, in my opinion. We have a database, but every agent is already in here. When you go to grow my network, every agent's already in here. So why also put them in here, right? So the advantage would be, okay, I have, let's just say I have a referral for San Diego. So I go to my referral network and I type in San Diego. Okay. Now it's first going to search only the people that are in my network. That's how it's supposed to work. But if I don't know them and I have put them in here just because of a random, they emailed me and said, do you want to be 
partners and I said yes, but I haven't really vetted them, then this doesn't really serve me really. I might as well just go to the map and pull somebody based on production or specialty or whatnot, which I'll show you how to do. So what I'm working on now is going back through here and actually I'm going to remove everybody that I don't actually know or that I have not really agreed by for some reason to work together as referral partners. I'm, I'm not part of those pay to play groups or anything like that. And if you are, that's a great use of this system, putting everybody in your system here that is part of that um, club or group or Facebook group or, or uh, pay to play group or whatever it is you're part of. It would make sense then that you would have all these people in there because you've agreed to back each other up, which there's nothing wrong with that. You've agreed to refer to each other. I know people get really mad about it, but it's actually a pretty strategic way of doing business, you know, and they win because of it. So I'm not opposed to um, to people doing that, but that's why you, that's what you would want to have down here then is you. OK, so somebody sends you a referral. Then you might want to return the favor by sending them a referral in the future. So what you want to do is you want to go through your referral network and say, oh, OK, these people are in San Diego and maybe you've marked them or you've tagged them or you've made notes of some sort. Now you can return the favor if you believe they're a qualified agent and return the referral. That's the best use of this system. And that's what I'm going to be cleaning up mine up now to do moving forward. I'm going through all of the people that have ever sent me a referral. The people that are big cheerleader supporters of my brands, of course, I want to make sure I'm returning um, the business that there. And of course, as long as their qualifications match with the referral, um, and I'll leave it up to my customers to actually, to my clients or customers to, re to interview them on their own to see if they're appropriate. And if I have two or three, I'll recommend two or three. I'll say, hey, Jane, thanks so much for asking me for a listing agent in San Diego, California. Here's three that I have personally done referrals with. Or here's three that have a, uh, a well-known brand. I would suggest interviewing them yourself or something al along those lines, okay? And then it's gonna track how many referrals there are being sent uh, through the system, where they are. All right, now let's take a look at this. So I'm just gonna pick the first one on my list here. All right, Tom is in Fort Collins, Colorado. He's got his description, his phone number, his, his email address. Now right here, create notes, this is where I should be putting, how, how did I meet Tom? Why did I put Tom in my referral network? You know, met at family reunion, really nice guy, super knowledgeable about investments. You know, th that would be advantageous to have here, okay? And then you have your agent stats. So it says their total number of transactions, the average deal size, and the sales volume in the last 12 months. Now, I would caution you on that only because I still think there are some issues with accuracy and teams and how things are set up. But at least you can get a, a little bit of a ballpark of is somebody doing business? Now, if it says zero, which I don't know how my, I'm going to have to look up, look up mine. Like in my case, uh, production doesn't go in my name. I don't close anything out in my name. It's all in the agent's name. So I, I believe now we have the Rainmaker stats on here. Uh, but at one time, it, would, it just said zero. So just keep those kind of things in mind as you're poking around with this to see who you might want to use. All right. Now, here we have a star so we can add that person as a favorite. Now that's a great idea. Let's just say I connect with five San Diego real estate agents because San Diego and Vegas are always sending referrals back and forth or Southern California and whatever, all of California. Maybe I want to favorite, you know, the top one, or maybe I want to favorite whoever I want the referral to go to next. Okay. Then we have the ability to add tags. So let's say I met Tom at family reunion. If I wanted to, I could create a tag called family reunion and now I'll know why I put Tom in the database. Okay. Maybe I also talked to Tom and he, I found out he was really good with investors. So maybe I want to create a tag there for investors or military or 55 plus some way to identify them. 
Maybe they're a VIP. I actually have this in my database. So they're a VIP, which means there's somebody that has sent me referrals before, or they're a VIP in my in all of my brands of some sort. So I want to make sure I'm I'm also considering them highly for referrals, right? So there's lots of ways that you can tag and you want to tag however that works for you. So you've got the ability to add notes and then you've got the ability also to add tags. Now here, when you start to search, you'll notice what you can search is people in your referral network and people out of your referral network that happen to fit whatever it is that you're typing in there, okay? Now, you can also click track referrals and you can now enter an agent in here and all the information to track a referral. So let's just say you did not, you did not actually place the referral through the system, but you still want to track it. Now we have the ability to go in here and manually track it. So if, um, if I sent a referral to Jamie Mixon in Louisiana, I could just say, okay, I'm going to put Jamie in here and I could put all of the information about Jamie. And now when I go to save it, it's going to tell me I'm missing info. So it says, okay, now wait a minute, select the client. Who is the client that you are um, sending the referral to? So we can select from our database or we can, let me see if that works. I'm going to pull me. Yep, there I am. Sure enough. So you can select somebody from your database that's already in there, or you can create a new contact and start from scratch, Miss Smith. Now, if it's not highlighted in red, then it's not required. That being said, the more fields you fill in, the better. And then the client's desired location, she's looking to move to, um, is it Mater, Louisiana? Here we go. And there's the client's phone number and the client's email, Smith at gmail.com. And the transaction timeline. Um, I'm going to have to look that one up, but it's dated today, so I'm going to leave it by default, uh, assuming she wants to buy now. So maybe that we would change that to like 30 days from now if it's going to be 30 days. But don't quote me on that last one because I've got to find out. There's no identifier here as to exactly what that does. So then I'm going to click add contact and save. Okay. Now it didn't send her, it did not send Jamie the referral. It's just tracking it. It's just tracking it. So if I want to track outbound referrals now, here's one here. Now this should be the one I just sent to Jamie, although that's for some reason, that section is still not working today. Then I can now track it. And did you notice they don't have to be with Keller Williams? I can now track all of my outbound referrals through the system. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to actually play with that to see if, if we can communicate through there. Now, what I can see, what is working, I can see I have 15 active referrals, three funded, lost 12, I'm not sure what that, how accurate that is. I think it's, we still, I'm not sure. I have to check the status on those. 10 expired, 40 all together. So you kind of get the idea of what, uh, get the idea. Now let me filter this. I'm trying to see why I can't see. They're just not there right now. All right, well, we'll come back to this and play more with the specifics on tracking referral. But you get the idea here now in your dashboard of, oh, there's 13 received. See, it's they're coming in now. That's so weird. So this is three cent. Let me see if they'll pop up now. Oh, still not yet. Okay, now, so let's go over to the map. And guys, what you see happening right now with my with the system, this is, this is KW commands being built and it's in beta and it's going to be like this for a long time. At every time they make updates or, you know, there's a major thing rolling out, we're going to have delays or things kind of getting stuck because it's software that's being built. So what I tend to do is instead of getting overwhelmed or upset, if I can't get to something, I move on to something else. And generally 
When I come back to it, I can then access whatever it is. If not, sometimes I need to go open an incognito window. This is in a regular window. It's very possible that if I go open this in an incognito window, that, that referral, these will pop up. And they actually suggest that we do use these in incognito window. But if not, if it's just doing some updates and I can't access, oh, there they were. Did you see that? They started to pop up. So I might just leave it and then walk away for a couple minutes and pop back. So just a minute ago when we started to exit, there they are. <laughs> there they are. See, that was a real life example of exactly how this happens. So this is, so here's the one that we just sent to Jamie. See all that? Complete, tracked, buyer, view activity log, mark as lost or funded. Now, as far as I can tell, we don't have a team version of this yet. And that is one of the reasons why I think some of mine say lost, because what we did is we moved it. They contact me and say, hey, Lori, I have a referral for you in Vegas. And I say, you know what, why don't you send it directly to Krista on my team? And then they find her in KW Command and send the referral to Krista. Now, I understand that's not ideal. We would like to ha be able to... Um, have everybody communicating in one place where we can see them. At the very least, I should be able to see um, Krista's referrals, right? And that would be beneficial or be able to sort by Jeff, Krista, David, and see everybody's referrals and then communicate with them in here like the Opportunities has where it's kind of like that Slack and we can start um, sending people back and forth, right? Anyway, that now you can see what this actually looks like. Now, unfortunately, on the track referral one, we don't have the ability to communicate through here like we do with these. So like this one here from Tracy, I can send an update. And when I click send an update, I can now send a note to Tracy and she'll receive it in the file. That is ideally how this is all supposed to work. With tracking, all you can do right now is just um, let's view the activity log. Referral created. Yeah, so far there there isn't anything I can see there um, other than putting that in there. But I'm going to bet that we're going to have the ability to add notes and communicate through here at some point as well. Okay, so now that you've seen that, the next step is I want to show you the map. Okay, now the map is really cool because we've got we've got lots of ways that we can use the map. We can look at production, we can look at market centers, we can look at our network, we can look at referral patterns. So let's start with production. We could search the map and say, okay, I want to search people's production in, I'm just going to go back to San Diego since I started with San Diego. Okay. Now, on the right hand side, you can see results of people that are in San Diego. And here you can see the total number and they're actually pinned to the map. Now this is kind of nice because maybe you're not sure exactly the spot in San Diego, but you kind of know the general area that person is searching for. You can look and go, okay, 121, let me look at that one. And you click it and you can see that there's 121 agents in that small general area and then it changes your results to the right hand side so it'd be similar to searching maybe by county you know something like that but that map lets us kind of zero in on a very specific um, area almost like a polygon like if we were to draw a polygon around it almost not quite okay now results we can now sort by random we can sort by name we can sort by closed units, listing sold, buy sides, and leases. All right, so let's say we have a referral we're going to send to the San Diego area, and it's a listing. So maybe we want to see, we want to deal with a listing agent that's closing a lot of listings. So less about the total sales volume, because that could be a few units that are luxury, and more about the total numbers of listings. Let's click on listing sold and see what it tells us. All right, so we'll take this first person. I'm not sure why it's cutting him off a little bit there. Let's take this first person, Nicholas, and we're going to click on this little arrow to open so we can see more about them. Okay, 
So it says here that Nicholas closed 10 units in this area, right in this area. Now he closed 172 total. I'm assuming this was last year, in the last 12 months, it looks like, yeah. So he closed 172 units. 109 of them were listings. 10 of them were in this spot last year. So what this would tell me is Nicholas is doing a lot of listings. He's doing a lot of listings in that general area. And so, and he did $128 million. Now, the, his average deal size is 747000 So that also helps me know if I'm dealing with somebody that's luxury. And, and of course, we don't always know what luxury is in somebody else's market, right? Like in Vegas, our average price range is 300000 So luxury here is going to be like 800 plus, right? 900 plus. They usually say triple it. So I'm going to guess in um, this particular area, this is probably just mid-range. But again, I don't know 100% because I don't know that area. So anyway, this is um, one way that you can do it. Now, some people say, oh, I wouldn't want to send it to a big team because they might be too busy. Fine, that's your choice. But at least you've got the numbers so that you can make a decision based on whatever decision you think is important, okay? Okay. Now, from here, if you click this little plus, you then send an invitation to Nicholas to join your network, okay? So you want him to be in your network so you can then send him a referral. So you could make a little note here and say, hey, Nicholas, I happen to do a search um, in the area where my, uh, in, the, in a certain area of San Diego where my customer is looking to move, and I can see that you, according to the production, you closed a lot of homes in that particular area and I would love to send you a, a referral. Are you interested? You know, 25% referral. Are you interested? Whatever. And then you can wait for them to answer. Now here, this little uh, guy here will actually let you directly send the referral without waiting to be connected in the network. Okay. So one is an invitation. I would say, I would say I, I'm probably sending both if I'm sending the referral because I would want them to be in my referral network, but maybe you don't even want them in your referral network until they accept the referral. So again, one of my favorite things about the way they're building KW Command is, is they're giving us lots of choices on how we do things, okay? So if I'm gonna send a referral to Nicholas now, I'm gonna choose, okay, this is my seller. What referral fee do you want? You can decide that here. How long do they have to accept your referral? You can decide that here. Keep in mind, you guys, that a lot of us are not seeing these referral requests yet. So it would be a great idea to email, message, call, text, somehow as well, letting them know that you have sent a referral to their referral to KW Command. Because, like, I didn't even see that request that I just now showed you guys, but she messaged me directly, and that's how I knew there was a referral pending. Okay? Minimum price, maximum price, not required. Optional, write a message. And then same thing, contact, select from database or create a new contact. And then you're going to add the contact and send. So you can do all of this right here from this map. My opinion is this map is a game changer. How many times have we heard somebody say, I have a referral for such and such. It's a place we've never even heard of. Or how about this? Hey, I've got a, um, I've got a referral for Ely, Nevada. Maybe I'll send that to Lori Ballin in Vegas. But then you take a look at the map and you're like, oh, wait a minute. How, where is Vegas compared to this? So you kind of zoom out a little bit because you're trying to find and you take a look and you start poking around at this and you realize Vegas is way down here. Wait, where did Ely go? <laughs> it's very far away. All right. So then that might make me go over. I would go over to Google and I would say, how far is Las Vegas from Ely, Nevada? three hours and 47 minutes by car. All right. So clearly that's going to be too far to send Lori Ballin in Las Vegas, a referral if it's in Ely, right? But people don't know that. Well, that's where these maps are going to come in super, super handy. Okay. Now the next thing I could do is I, oh, there's no real estate agents in Ely at all. The next thing I could do is say, okay, let's go back to um, San Diego all right, now we can look at market centers. So now you've got a recruit. 
and you've got somebody that's interested in joining Keller Williams and you know that they're looking in the San Diego area, but you don't really know the area super well. So you might be looking at all of the market centers that are in that general area. This is all popping up in the San Diego area. So La Jolla, there's two. See the two? That means click it and you'll see the two that are inside of there. One here and one here. Now click it. And on the right hand side, now we see all the agents that are in that area. So that's not showing us the, you know, that would be a good idea now that I'm thinking about it. They should put like the team leader on the top of every one of these so that if we wanted to, we could just reach out to that team leader directly. That's just an FYI wish list thing as I'm thinking out loud. All right. You can also search by zip code and you can also search as associates by name. So if I wanted to find somebody here by name, I'm then there's my friend, Jamie. I can see exactly where Jamie is located and I can um, send Jamie a referral right from here. She's already in my network or I can click here and find out more information about Jamie. See, see what I mean about the numbers aren't correct. So it, sa it says she sold 24 listings, but she has no production. So be careful about ruling people out by that. Jamie's a great agent and sold 24 homes for zero. She gave away 24 homes. Completely for free. Big hearted Jamie. All right. So clearly we're going to, those numbers aren't accurate yet. All right. But then I get, at least I can find Jamie. I can get her contact info. I can um, send her a referral right from here. Okay. Thank you, Jamie, for being my beautiful example. Okay. Now the next thing we could do is we can scroll down and look at my network. So again, now I only want to find people that are in my network, meaning I've already connected with them. So I want to start there because these are going to be the people that I like. These are going to be the people that I have sent business to or have sent me business and I want to have some kind of connection. Okay. Now, remember, if this isn't working correctly from the map view, we were able to do it from grow my network from the my network option as well. All right. Let me refresh this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to referral patterns. This is a new feature that's really cool. I'm going to go to referral part patterns. Okay. Now look at this. I'm able to see the referral patterns that are happening right now inside KW command. So people in Las Vegas, where are the referrals being sent to Las Vegas to Reno, right? Okay. Now you can sort these by percentage of referrals. And this is going to be from city to city. Okay. Now what I want to do is reverse this. Hold on one second here. There it is. <laughs> I was missing it. Okay. So this is, if I'm first looking in Las Vegas, which is where I am, this is referrals sent. So I can see from my location where the most referrals are being sent out to. And here I can see received. All right. Now this is, this is a big deal because the more we start using KW command, the more this is going to give us information. Okay. Now look at this one, Honolulu all the way over there. So from top to bottom, what I can see is that Prescott, Arizona is sending the most referrals right now to Las Vegas, Nevada. So the first point of action that I should be doing is connecting with people in Prescott, Arizona. Let me connect with some real estate agents in Prescott. Let me go to family reunion and put out a blast saying on either the social channels on the social feed with family reunion or hashtag KWFR or on Facebook. Hey, I'm looking to connect with people from Prescott, Arizona. Maybe you can put, in fact, I had this happen. I just went to family reunion and a guy approached us. Uh, my brother and I were both wearing Las Vegas t-shirts. He saw us from across a convention room. He ran over and said, Hey, I'm supposed to meet two people from Las Vegas. 
and he gave us his card, he shook our hand, and he said, you are one of the top uh, refers to whatever city he happened to be in, so I want to make sure I connect with you. And that's exactly right. Now, the bad news is he didn't create any sort of rapport um, with us or follow up with us, so I couldn't tell you who it was. So him meeting us meant he knows who we are to send a referral, but he didn't plant a seed and water it so that I would know where to send him a referral. So if he was if he was trying to get people to send him referrals, that kind of failed after the fact because there was no connection made after the fact. And 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 I shouldn't say he failed because they might have tried. I mean, I got a ton of thank you cards afterwards. It's, but it takes a lot, you know, just like any any other type of marketing, it takes like seven times for somebody to remember who you are. So what this guy should have done is sent me a card or messaged me or done set eight by eight with me in an eight by eight real estate agent way. Like send me a card with a picture of something from your location and then send me a Facebook message with some sort of quality, something that I'm going to pay attention to. Nobody wants to just get Facebook messages to say, Hey, please remember me for your referrals. That means nothing to anybody that's busy. You've got to be somehow making the connections. So like every now and then I'll get a Facebook message from somebody or, um, yeah, somebody will send me a Facebook message and say, Hey, Lori, I thought you might like this podcast. It has to do with, um, the such and such real estate market coming to Vegas or, you know, those kind of things. Those would be ways to start making connections, but that's a whole nother video, isn't it? Anyway, so second on my list is Chicago, Illinois with 3%. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that that is all the referrals being sent from Keller Williams. This is only people, uh, that are sending them through KW command. So this will continue to grow, but at the very least, it gives you a starting point. It gives you a starting point. If you say, okay, well, let me just start with Prescott, you know, hold on. It's a little squirrely here. I was trying to click that, see what it does. Hold on, let's go up. There we go. There we go. Got it. Okay. So it says, um, Not sure. La Prescott to Las Vegas. Oh, top received by Prescott. Okay, that doesn't mean anything to me if I'm just trying to get referrals from looking to Vegas. Okay, but if I were to click on Vegas, then inbound, there we go. Then we can look at top received. Okay, there it is. So Vegas has 8% coming from Prescott, 3% coming from Chicago, 2% coming from Temecula, uh, 2% Vegas to Vegas. That's interesting. And 1% Colorado Springs to Las Vegas. So this is going to continue to grow, but it's a good time to start right now with the referral partners. And then finally, you can also use this blue button up, up in the right hand side and you can click new referral and you can start a new referral here, find your agent by name and start the process there. So my opinion now is that we should all be using the referral network. There's just no reason not to use this. But the caveat is make sure you text, message, or contact the person you're sending a referral to because they may not see it. They may not get the alert. And then, then all of a sudden you're telling them they can't have it and they didn't get the, they didn't get the, you know, they didn't get it. So now's the time to start growing your network strategically, tag, put everybody in there correctly. And I would love, of course, to be in there as your Las Vegas referral, um, person agent of choice here, my team with Krista, David, and Jeff, and myself, Lori. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel, 365 Days of KW Command.